A new PBS NewsHour NPR Marist poll offers clues into where voters stand on President Trump, the 2020 Democratic candidates, and health care. Plus, what to expect from Wednesday's Mueller hearings. Analyzing all this and more, our Politics Monday team. That's Amy Walter of the Cook Political Report and host of Politics with Amy Walter on WNYC Radio and Tamara Keith of NPR. She also co-hosts the NPR Politics Podcast. Amy and Tam, welcome to you both. Happy Monday. Shall we dig into this poll? Let's, Please. Let's do it. Let's, let's take a look at the presidential approval rating. This is its highest point ever, 44%. That has inched up uh, recently. And take a look at what's driving that increase right here. Among independents, a bit of a shift. It was 42%, sorry, rather, was 35% in June. That is now up to 42%. Amy, when you see those numbers, what do you think? So the good news for the president is this is the first time since Mar Marist has been polling his presidency that he's had a 40% approval rating or over 40% approval rating for three consecutive polls mm -hmm. that they've taken. So that's the good news. But here's underneath it all some challenges for the president. I mean, I think the number one number, at least that I looked at, was if, if, if you had said to me, there's a president running for re-election, 53% of voters say they think he's doing a good job on the economy. 65% of voters said the economy is working well for them personally, including almost half of Democrats and 62% of independents. You'd say, well, that president's going to get re-elected, right? People feel good about the economy. They personally feel good, including Democrats. And then you see his overall approval rating is 44%, right? Which suggests there's a disconnect there. People feeling good about the economy, they're not feeling particularly good about the president himself. And underneath this, too, for Democrats, though, there's some warning signs. The number that I really stood out for me when they asked, do you think the ideas offered by Democrats move the country in the right direction or wrong direction? 43% said wrong direction, 46% the right direction, which is part of the reason I think you're seeing that independent number move and the overall number move is that it's not just Trump, the president, in a uh, in sort of a vacuum. Mm -hmm. It's now the president up against right. the concept of Democrat. There's no Democratic nominee, but the concept that people saw at the Democratic debates and the fight that they're seeing right now among Democratic candidates. And I want to talk specifically about one of those policies and some of the plans they have in just a second. But, Tam, over to you. That shift in independence, that might surprise a lot of people, though. Is there something in the message the president's delivering? Or, as Amy's suggesting, is it really just, okay, we're not sure what the Democrats are putting forward, so we'll go here? I think we can't know for certain, but I think Amy <laughs> is right on in saying that approval for the economy is strong. Uh, people feel good about the economy. They feel good about how they're doing. And an important part of presidential approval traditionally is how do you feel about how the country's doing? How do you feel about the economy? So the president has that going for him. Uh, what he has potentially weighing him down is what's always weighed him down, uh, which is the tweets and, uh, you know, the, the comments and the feuds and the fights and and the things that make people feel uncomfortable about him. So take a look at how uh, folks are looking at the Democratic candidates. This is another graphic we're pulling out from this new poll today. Back in June, people were asked what's more important to them, a nominee who shares their values or someone who can beat Trump. Uh, slightly more people wanted someone who shares their values back in June. Now that has shifted. More people want a nominee who can beat Donald Trump in the next election. But it's an eight-point jump there. Uh, what do you make when you look at those numbers? Those numbers reflect everything that I have been told by any voter I have talked to in any early state, early voting state in this country, which is you hear again and again and again, I want to beat Donald Trump. I want a candidate who can beat Donald Trump. Now, try to pull out of them what does that mean, and a lot of them have a lot of different ideas, but the fact that they are willing to sort of put their own personal priorities behind the big one, which is preventing the president from being reelected uh, is an indication of just how strongly Democrats feel heading into this election. And what that means, that's a very good point, because the number that really didn't move much between June and July when you asked Democrats, um, have you settled on a candidate yet? 19% yeah. mm -hmm. say yes. Back in June, it was 14%. So it's not exactly skyrocketing now. People say, well, I know who the most, you know, normally you'd look at that and say, well, if those numbers are moving on, I want a candidate who can be elected. Certainly, they must be agreeing on who that most electable candidate is. That is not the case. There's a really big argument right now in the Democratic primary about what it means to, to be, be electable. electable and and how, you know, what what is electable 
for Democrats this time around, and that is completely unsettled, which is showing up in a lot of these numbers. Very quickly, I want to get to one last interesting thing from this poll. This is on one specific issue, right? This is how Democrats are looking at health care and what voters say that they want. Um, there's a big divide among the Democratic Party, right? But this is what people say that they want. Seventy percent of Americans favor a Medicare for all who want it, which basically means they want a choice between a national health insurance program or a private health insurance. Uh, Amy, there's still a big divide among the Democratic candidates there's, about what kind of plan they're actually going to get behind. There is. And the one thing that I noticed in this poll when they asked Democrats that question, mm -hmm. um, the Medicare for all is popular, more popular among people who identify as progressive, so liberal or very liberal. But it also has a 55 percent approval rating among moderates as well. So this is one of those issues that you know, if you're Joe Biden or some of the other more moderate members uh, of the 2020 Democratic class running for president, you point to that number and you say, look, 41 percent, only 41 percent of overall Americans like this idea of a Medicare for all that gets rid of private insurance. But you have to convince members of your own party, most of whom, two thirds of them, are supportive of the Bernie Sanders model, that it's better to look at Again, going to the electability question, can somebody with this sort of position get elected when only 40 percent approve of it? Let's take a look at another story we've been following, and that is the ongoing uh, tweet storm from the president, 1048 yes. this morning. He tweeted this in his latest in a series about the four young congresswomen of color. The squad, as they're known, he says, is a very racist group of troublemakers who are young, inexperienced, not very smart. They're pulling the once great Democrat party far left. He goes on specifically about other issues. Um, Tam, as I mentioned, this was 1048 this morning. Every time we think this has gone away, the president tweets about it again. Is this just what we're going to continue to see? Oh, right through to the election. I mean, I think he, if he could continue to talk about the squad forever, he would. Um, and this, no, I'm not the racist, you're the racist, they're the real racist. I mean, for months I've been hearing on conservative talk uh, various uh, hosts saying, oh my gosh, this congresswoman, that congresswoman, Ocasio-Cortez or Ilhan Omar, so racist. They say it again and again in conservative media, and this is the president um, sort of reflecting that messaging. And, and it's messaging that you hear when you talk to his supporters. They volunteer it. They volunteer those names of those congresswomen and say, wow, they're racist. Damn, I hate to do this to you. One minute left. But there's a big <laughs> day coming up this week. Yes. Robert Mueller is going to be on Capitol Hill testifying. It's the first time we hear from him directly. What is the Democrats' strategy here, and how do Republicans counter it? Well, so what Democrats want is for people who didn't uh, read the book or read the report to watch the movie, watch the TV show, see some of the elements that were in that report, and say, oh, wow, there was more there than I realized. What uh, the president and his allies want is a dud. They want people either not to watch it, not to pay attention, or uh, for Mueller to give his testimony, for it to be bland, and for them to be able to just say, well, there's nothing more than you saw in the report, and the report speaks for itself the end. 15 seconds. What 15 do you seconds. Say? <laughs> I think depending on what kind of Democrat you are, you, the outcome is very different. If you're a moderate, you would hope that maybe there's nothing that's really um, incredible that comes out of this that pushes the impeachment debate into a reality. If you are someone on the progressive end or have signed on already to saying you wanted to impeach the president, you're hoping there will be momentum behind that. And the president says that he might watch a little bit might. of it. Maybe. Maybe. Amy Walter, Dan Ricky, <laughs> Politics Monday. Thanks for being here. You're welcome. welcome.